走れソリよ、風のように、月見原を、Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Fate Slash To Be Released. I'm here with Zenra. Oh. I need to forget that we recently said that I can just say this is the name of the show. People know. We've done so many episodes. Yeah, it's, it's just generally expected when you're on the 85th episode of a Fate series that you probably, it's with me. Yeah, exactly. Like this many episodes in, people should know. Anyway, before we, before we get into it, I want to talk real quick about this.、Um, so, you know what's coming up pretty soon there, Zen? I'm going to say no because you don't know what I'm thinking about.、Uh, it's, WrestleMania. I don't know your mind, no. <laughs> no, WrestleMania is coming up. You know, the biggest、oh. show of the year, the, the granddaddy of them all, the wrestling. End event, what is supposed to be the season ender of a lot of wrestling stories, but recent years it has not been that at all. So it's actually been one continuing soap opera as opposed to ending seasons. Do you know how fucking long people are expecting this to be? Three hours? Fucking eight hours. Eight hours? So here, okay, so the last time you stopped watching wrestling, it was all one thing. Um,. The WWE is too fucking big. They have three shows. It's Raw, SmackDown, Raw and SmackDown, which are two separate shows. They exist in the same、that. universe, but there's two different casts for each show. s And then you have Cruiserweights, which are considered under the Raw and SmackDown brand, but get their own personal show called 205 Live. And then there's another show for the developmental team, which is called NXT, which does not get a part of WrestleMania, which is good because fuck, that would be way too long. So, as of recent years, they've had to. Let me just tell you, this is the titles currently up that are up for grabs in、uh, WrestleMania. You have the World Heavyweight Championship, you got the. The,、uh, I forget what they fucking call it. It's the Brock Lesnar Championship, which is the, the useless ass belt that carries around his stupid ass waist. You have the Raw Women's Championship. You have the SmackDown Women's Championship. You have the Raw SmackDown Tag Team Champions. You have the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. You have the Women's Tag Team Champions, which were just recently added. You have the Intercontinental Champion, and then you have the US Champion. So, right there in my hand, I just named nine different championships that people fight for. Excessive, it's a lot, it's fucking a lot. And then, so assuming that every single one of these championships has to put up their title, because otherwise, why the fuck do you have a champion if they're not gonna do shit? Right? It just makes sense. You also、right. have personal grudge matches between wrestlers. So, you have, I believe it's、uh, Randy Orton, he's gonna be fighting AJ Styles. You have Kurt Angle, who's having his final retirement match against like some. Somebody everyone fucking hates, so who fucking cares? And then you have the Andre the Giant Battle Royale, which is、uh, basically all the other wrestlers that don't get, aren't important enough to have their own singles title. They all get to get here so they can have a WrestleMania moment. And then you have that for the women, which is funny because they were gonna, na- they named it Mae Young, and then recently they were like, by the way, Mae Young fucked over a lot of women. It, you should not name it after her. Andre the Giant was a form of a saint. This woman was a monster. And so they're like, you're right. And her name was off of it because Snickers complained. Snickers was like, hey,、um, excuse me, you're going to name our championship that we're sponsoring after a woman who did what to women? Who sold what into what? You're going to do that? Snickers yeah, doesn't. That's probably a bad idea. Yeah, Snickers doesn't approve. So Vince McMahon said, damn it, Snickers doesn't approve. Remove her name. So it's now just the women. <laughs> So, right there is around 14 something matches. I always and... knew Snickers was a class act. Yeah, Snickers is a class act. Except they pulled their blizzards from Dairy Queen, bastards. Those are the only good ones. Yeah, that's a punk ass move. So, I've been having to、uh, catch up on all this, and it's been watching. We might, I might is, this act- where,、uh, is this where Triple H is going to give Dave Batista what he wants? Fuck it. I forgot about that. That's the 15th thing. <laughs> <laughs> is this where that's gonna happen? Yeah, I believe Triple H is fighting Batista over、um, uh, the career of Triple H. So hopefully, if Batista wins, it will mean that we no longer have to watch Triple H wrestle for 20 is minutes. Is Triple H like 65 years old? 
No, he. I believe he's around 50 with the body of a... No, he, that's not fair, because I was going to say a body of a 70-year-old. He has about the life expectancy of a 70-year-old man. Let me put it that way. I, I just remember I used to watch wrestling a lot as a kid, and I haven't watched it in probably over a decade. Sounds and fun. Triple H was when I was watching it. He was still there. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing is is that Triple H is still fantastic on the mic. The problem is is that he he keeps putting himself in like, no, I'm going to go for 20 minutes. And it's like, Triple H, please. You have been unable to do 20-minute matches about five years ago, and yet you're still doing them. <laughs> what is wrong with but you? He, he loses steam. Is that it? Yeah, that's the main problem is that a lot. this is actually a lot of problem with – older wrestlers this is actually a problem with kurt angle as well is that they're not able to go the lengths that they used to but they still want to so it's rick like, flair who like could barely walk doing stuff not that long ago he not for wwe anymore that he had his retirement okay. match against Shawn michaels and that was their way of saying okay and michaels you, is also old as shit isn't he not as old as rick flair rick flair is like no nobody's as old as rick flair jesus christ no. but still Mass, massive respect. Hopefully he's still recovering good from the injuries that he sustained uh, from, I believe, a heart attack. But it's funny enough, Triple... So here's another thing that this... Now that I'm just opening a can of worms, is that fucking... Um, so Ric Flair is 100% retired. Shawn Michaels had a retirement match against The Undertaker that is basically the closest thing to a holy grail for a retirement, retirement match that you could hope for. The only one that's better is the one against Ric Flair. And f- he sold that out for a bunch of money from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so. Oh, right. I remember reading about that, that Saudi Arabia shit. And the match was shit, even though, like, uh, because you no longer want to see. Sh- if Shawn Michaels is coming back, I don't want to see him fighting a bunch of fucking old dudes that he used to fight. I want to see him fight new guys and actually, like, see if he can go from th- with them. But that's not what they're going to do. They put him with Undertaker and Kane. Which is like, maybe if this was seven... They were also around when I was a kid. Yep, they're still around. This is a problem with wrestling. Just FYI, I was like eight. Yeah, they're still around. Thankfully, Kane is, I believe, a mayor of some place, so he doesn't show up as as often as he used to because he's a fucking mayor. He only showed up in Saudi Arabia because they gave him a bunch of money, which he then used to give to the people of his conglomerate or wherever. He gave it to the people that he was being the mayor over. Um, Like that? I don't know if that's legal, but they did it. So either way, they got a lot of money from that. Um, so yeah, I'm preparing for WrestleMania, and we'll. I'll, I, I you know, I don't want to spend too much time because we got to get into some fate stuff. I'll talk about this uh, next time we do an episode. But it's a lot of shit, dude. It's a lot of shit. I just, I just really want to know if Batista gets what he wants. I hope he gets what he wants because that's <laughs> give me what I want as fantastic. <laughs> It's one of my favorite memes that has come out in a very long time. The great thing about it is like, oh, God, this is why you got to give your wrestlers acting training. Because Batista went off and became like a legit funny actor. And now he knows 100% like, no, nah, what I'm about to weigh and the way I'm delivering it in the shitty way here, people are going to laugh at this. People are going to they're going to take this further than what anyone expected. And he was 100% right. That's they totally it, did. It's totally worth it, too. Yeah, 100%. You got to have more. You got to get your acting chops up. Otherwise, you're dead on the mic, Rousey, and you're just killing all hype for your match because you can't fucking talk. So yeah, you I've just... heard that not great things about her since she switched over. Oh, she's, she's been... That's, an- that's another... <laughs> Wait for the next episode for my <laughs> continuing thoughts on why Rousey sucks and why Kofi Mania is here to stay. <laughs> but let's get into the some fate dudes. Uh, well, girls specifically. I was about to say, uh, do they make fate dudes? Yeah, they do. And Actually, one of the dudes, the same girl in a different outfit. Sometimes, sometimes. Actually, let's get into it. Let's go first, since um, uh, uh, North America. We're gonna cover two. Actually, well, so people will see. Let's start with um, so North America released recently, Guda Guda Two, which is the sequel to Guda Guda One, which is the Nobunaga um. Nobunaga came from Guda Guda 1, and so now we're in Guda Guda 2, and here's the free-to-play unit. It is called Chacha. I believe that's the way you say her name, because I don't l- listen to with uh, audio on, so I just have to assume her name is pronounced kind of like in that scene from Emperor's New Groove, where he goes, eh, Chacha? Pacha? <laughs> so, Chacha. Her name is Chacha. 
Uh, let's see what she does. Her skill one is Golden Rule Calamity uh, Rank B. She charges her own MP gauge every turn for three turns and has own increased NP generation. That's Noble Phantasm. Rate when taking damage for three turns. And the regen at uh, level one is 5% and attack regen is at 20% and cooldown is at 8. And then when at level 10, it is 10%, 50%, and turn 6. Her second skill is Innocent Monsters, parentheses Flame, rank C. Uh, she gains critical stars every turn for three turns and reduces party's critical star absorption rate by 50% except herself for three turns. Uh, at level 1, she gets 5 stars, and at level 10, she gets 10 stars, and the cooldown is 7, and it's 5 at the final rank. And finally, her third skill is Favorite Princess of Japan, rank EX. It reduces one enemy's defense every turn for 5 turns, starting with a 10% on turn 1, and then it goes down from there. So at level 1, uh, the value goes up by 5%, so basically at the end of turn 1, they lose 10% uh, defense, and then by turn 5, they are suffering 30%. So it goes up by 5% until turn 5, and then at skill 10, uh, she the value up is 10%, so she they lose 10% defense, and then all the way at turn 5, they suffer 50% like less defense, and the cooldown yeah. is at 5. What that basically means is that at turn 1, they take 10% less damage and then when it hits turn 5 it goes to 30% when it's at skill 1 and when it's at 10 it turns into 50% and that's a continuation for 1 turn, 2 turn, 3, 4, 5, 6 so. and the cooldown is 6 for people who can't do math that means she's getting literally half damage no the, she's, that's that's uh, affected to the enemy so the enemy is taking 50% more damage by the end of turn 5 Ah, that's also good yeah that's pretty good that's it's, a, it's an interesting probably better actually yeah, better, I would say. Uh, her passive skills are mad, uh, Madness Enhancement, E+, so her own buster performance is up by 3%. Her Noble Phantasm is called... Uh, excuse me for fucking this up. I'm actually just going to use a translated name. It's called Ca Dazzling Castle of the Sun in the Demonic Realm. It deals damage to all enemies and then reduces their critical attack chance by 20% for 3 turns. At uh, NP damage 1, it's 300%, and then when it gets to 5, it is 500%, and this hits everyone. This is an AoE. Uh, and the burn she inflicts at charge 1 is, 100, is 500, and then at the final, it's 2,500, which, whatever. In terms of burn damage, it's not that bad. Um, and then from there, her skill re... It's a, it's a bunch of stuff. And so finally, the last thing I'll say is that this is her lore. She is the niece of Oda Nobunaga, uh, who is the one who from Gudu Gudu 1. She is naive and arrogant and super uh, spendthrift that enjoys gorgeous luxuries at any given opportunity. Simply put, a woman that demands work and money. I love This is, by the way, the way the game treats her. <laughs> this is her lore in the game. A lovely, mischievous huh. princess with a willfulness and greatly troubled even a head of government, and yet you cannot hate her for some reason. That being the case, there's already something I want to have. That is the quote from her. And uh, let me give Zen quickly her stage 4 art so she can see it. I'm not a big fan of this stage 4 art, and you'll see why almost immediately. There's one very good part of it, and then the rest is not great. There you go. All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of feet, right? On bread? Yeah, yeah one, that's a lot of feet. Two, is that is that bread? Yeah, she's put her feet up on bread <laughs> for some reason. I don't understand. Who's getting anything out of this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't... All I can think of is uh, the Bob's Burgers episode that came out recently where they were talking about bread perverts. Yes. And this is also her. Uh, this is her regular art, which I actually like better than that one. She's actually one of the very few uh, what the game category. That was way better. That's is way better. Her, again, I really don't like the final stage art at all, but I think one is way better because she has an actual cool outfit on. And her art isn't like 95% her foot. Exactly. Uh, and at this point, I will also give you her... Um, I'll give you the video for her uh, Noble Phantasm.
that was crazy and cool. Yeah. So I really like the Skeletons came out and then a fucking Phoenix. What the fuck? I know it was pretty fucking cool. Um, her main problem is that she's berserkers and berserkers fucking die easy, especially later game. But the fact that she has three buster cards, she's basically what is, uh, what fake considers a buster gorilla, which is that they're very brain dead, but also they're so strong. Why would you bother doing anything else? And you use them (laughs) with Merlin. And I really do think her skill three is actually pretty interesting if you can actually get it up there. The skill one is okay, uh, and second skill may as well not exist because it's like whatever. The only thing that's good is that it reduces everyone's uh, critical star absorption because berserkers have a hard. They have naturally the worst uh, star absorption of every class because if you if you give them crits, then they'll just kill everything automatically. So I like that she actually makes it so everyone doesn't get as much crits as her. But yeah, that's that's Cha Cha. Cha Cha. That's Cha Cha. What are you feeling about her, Zen? And again, I'll say free to play. It's good. Um, I really like that super attack because it's like it's hilarious. <laughs> There's the little weird 3D skeleton men. And then she shoots a fucking phoenix while screaming, and the skeleton men are just like, ah, while the phoenix is going. <laughs> uh the art of her with like her fire katana and one of those weird japanese umbrellas in front of like a fucking pink moon yeah pretty Pretty, great uh the other art of the like the weird like uh foot fetish bread pervert art i'm not a fan of no not a fan of at all i'm going three out of five because that final art is like that offensive yeah i'm gonna agree i will say i do like that she's one of the very few uh lowly characters that at the end is not fucking um but as naked, so she gets points that for is that. Good, yeah. But also, this is a completely different fetish that we're answering in with the bread. Yeah, uh, my, the only thing I can think of is that Sonic picture from Sonic Adventure, where the caption is "Get your fetish away from me." Exactly, she's perfect in that sense. She's basically the summation of that. So yeah, three out of five for Cha Cha. If you're doing Guda Guda, she's definitely worth uh, the grinding up. I would say, not in that way, you sick perverts. I mean, God's in- sake, it's yeah it's bread yeah it's bread um all right let's go on to the next one man so uh i just did this accidentally i replayed her attack while the jojo pillar man theme was going off pretty great combination pretty solid combo is that enough of a combo for you is that enough of a combo for you to go like maybe 3.5 i think i would go to 3.5 if she played the pillar man theme when she attacked okay so let's say it, if you Seeing are the fucking skeletons come out during like the <laughs> it's really good damn it all right i'm gonna see if i'm actually gonna be able to put that up see if i can <laughs> show what they mean <laughs> See if we get a copyright strike because I'm using the Pillar Men theme. Oh, man. All right. That's her. Let's go on to the next unit. Uh, This is an actual dude. This is the only dude that's going to be going on the list today. He doesn't have weird footbread art. No, he doesn't. This is uh, Arash. I believe that's how you say his name. He is an Indian hero, so I'm not 100% sure how you say his name. Um... His art is the best way I could describe it, which I will show you eventually. It looks like he just looks like a very good boy. <laughs> that A very good man, I'll say, like Jonathan. Kind of like Jonathan from JoJo. Uh, his active skill 1 is uh, Robust Health EX. Increases his own defense for 3 turns and increases his own poison debuff resistance for 3 turns. Um, it's it, at, le- at level 10, because he is a 1 star, he is 1 star. So that means you find him in the free-to-play gacha. That means it's very easy to get him to 10, so I'm just going to give you the 10. It is 20% defense, and then 100% poison resistance, and then at a cooldown of 5. His skill 2 is Clairvoyance A, increases his own critical star generation for 3 turns. Uh, at It's 40% at 10 turns, and it's also a 6-turn cooldown. And his final skill, which you have to unlock after you've strengthened him, is called Bow and Arrow Creation A. 
He charges his own NP gauge and then recover, recovers his own health. So he gets 30% of his Noble Phantasm, which is, again, the special attack. You need 100 to launch your Noble Phantasm, so you get 30% right there. And then he heals 3,000, so you get back that much uh, health, and it is at a cooldown of 6 at level 10. Um, now here's here's the showstopper. His Noble Phantasm, which after you, use his inter- after you upgrade it from the interlude, it is called Stella. It is called the Lone Meteor. That is a translation. Effect is, and also because he's uh, a one-star dude, that means you're going to have him at five. So I'm going to give you the five effect of what it does. But let me quickly explain what he does. He deals damage to all enemies, and then a demerit, he sacrifices himself. This sacrifice (laughs) cannot be prevented unless it is triggering guts, which means he dies (laughs) after using it. And at level five, he deals one... the damage percentage is 1,200% damage. <laughs> and then depending on uh, his overcharge, it he deals um, extra damage of either 0, 200%, 400 uh, 800%, or, uh, of 600%, or 800%, or 800%. So if you get him to uh, 300% of NP charge, he deals around 1,600% damage. <laughs> And it's Buster. <laughs> so if you do a Buster combo, he does even more damage. Uh, I think the thing after explaining this, it's time to show the video. The best part is that he yells, Stella! <laughs> and then dies. <laughs> and his, uh, this is Man, his... He really does. It's just an explosion. Yeah, and here is his uh, uh, lore. He is a hero of legend from ancient... Oh, it's Persia. So it's even further back. He brought the end of the 60-year war between the Persians and the Turks while serving under King Manucher, who was known as the last king of the Age of Gods in the West Asia, the savior who brought peace and order to both people. I'm actually going to explain a little bit more because this will eventually explain um, why his noble phantasm is seven seconds long and he dies. In Legends, the national border between Persia and Turin was created by means of Arash's ultimate arrow. It divided the arrow when shooting range included 2,500 kilometers. It is said that in exchange for a special move beyond humans, he lost his life by having his body scattered in all directions. So basically, there was like a land dispute. He saw people were fighting over land. He shot an arrow so hard he created the border and then ceased existing. (laughs) <laughs> it was that yeah. strong and um this is probably one of the best units to grind in fake go in fake go about 80 percent of the things you're doing is grinding and this guy literally i've taken him to events where he's able to solo extremely powerful monsters he can basically kill any class that isn't lancer because that is his weakness in one shot <laughs> it is that powerful his noble phantasm behind that yeah and he screams uh, stella and then he leaves and then here's a funny thing that i'm just gonna mention his alignment is chaotic neutral so he's not even a good guy he is chaotic and neutral <laughs> uh let me show you his art real quick this is um this is him at uh, level one so that's what you get yeah. him at base form it's very basic and then bad though not bad and then this is him at a uh, Level five, but again, this is for a level one dude. And that is some serious Jonathan Joestar vibes. Yeah, definitely. And you can especially see it here at the end with him like looking up, muscles toned, perfectly good looking up. Sun in the background. I think uh, Eresh is if you are playing. A lot of people. We actually have a question later on that says, "If I'm re-rolling, who should I go for?" Um, he is free to play, and I would say you should make sure to get Eresh to level 5 as soon as possible. <laughs> he helps so much in the long game for being um, uh, a dude who's just good for grinding. And he has two Buster cards, two Arts cards. Uh, his Arts cards are, because he's so weighted towards, like, I'm going to die after using my Noble Phantasm, his Arts cards almost completely fill him up if you use both of them. So he gets around a uh, good... Let's say 40% from that. So, yeah, that's Arash. 
Uh, if I were to, uh, my personal score for this dude is a perfect five out of five. There is no dude better. <laughs> I'm also going with a five out of five because he literally looks like Universe Six Jonathan Joestar. He does, and then also this is another good thing. I think this is very important. Uh, during April Fools, this is his art. Ah, yes. <laughs> Yes, everything. Oh, it's really good. I love Arish. So he deserves that 5 out of 5. Uh, let's move on. And now we will go to... Uh, so Japan recently had an event. I don't know what the name of it is because it is uh, in Japanese. And I don't play... I'll know in two years what its translation will be, basically. <laughs> but they had a new assassin girl, and her name is Kama. I don't know anything about the lore because it's not fully translated. I believe she is supposed to be an Indian goddess of love, but don't quote me on that. She is a pseudo-servant, which I will quickly explain to everyone what a pseudo-servant is. Um, so there are characters in the Fate series that um, they would really like in a gacha, but because they have to be summoned from the Holy Grail, it doesn't make sense to make them. So they created something called a pseudo-servant, which is basically the body of the person that you like, but mixed in with a god basically the gods are borrowing their body or something or a heroic servant is borrowing their body um the most ex the waiver is a good example of this he shares his body with a chinese uh strategist who i can't remember the name of uh ishtar shares the bad uh, the body with rin um so this new girl kama shares the body of uh sakura i believe it's matoi sakura that's her mato sakura i'm not 100 percent sure how to pronounce the last name so i'm not going to try um okay so we're going to do this very differently i'm not going to explain any of the skills none of her skills really matter for this i'm just going to show zen slowly what her stage one is this is something that's completely different in that i'm going to show stage one stage two stage three ah don't tell me that my computer's trying to stop me from doing this <laughs> my computer is like fighting on all cylinders like you can't do this to the man <laughs> okay let me see there we go um so here is stage one very basic yeah all right as you can see here she is in the body of her as a child it that uh, seems very normal for fate it's very normal okay here is Stage two. Oh, she's, she's like a teenager now. She's a teenager now. Um, this is actually following also Sakura's actual, like, her growing into an adult. Uh, if you remember from Fate, the 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 kid version is there, her specifically. Here's the third one. Oh. Yeah. All right. Okay. And All right. then here is the fourth one. <laughs> Which is what you get when you finally fully awaken her. Uh, of course. <laughs> of course it is. Now, of course it is. Uh, when she was first announced, all I really had was the stage one art. <laughs> and then I looked away from work for a brief second saying, oh, let me see what her later material is. Hopefully uh, the little girl wasn't horribly put in no clothes. Only to find out that, like, over time, her body had actually gotten older. <laughs> At least she's older. She is older. Um, yeah, this is her. Could always be worse is the moral of this, this art. Yeah, this is the moral of the art. Also, this is by um, Redrop, who is makes the best um, uh, CE art in all of the game. He's the one who's responsible for... Um, uh, Dangerous Beast, uh, Trick or Treatment, all the good, all the good ones that I don't have time to show because uh, I can't fully go into why they're great. You see here. She shoots an arrow. A little float action. Oh, she's got a bow. Yeah. Very a very basic one, I would say. Yeah, I got him with the little little shots there. Yeah. It's uh, you know, nothing 
too uh, fancy. Here is when she is an adult, she gets a completely. I San -san, come. I uh so she like the galaxy like what's happening i believe she is the galaxy i believe one of her actual special uh normal attacks is to hit people with a black hole all right then yeah and that is fair. I believe. Uh, what is her actual? Let me check out what the actual damage is. It's only rank C, by the way. So that means that um, that is uh, C. Uh, to incarnate affection in the name of love is the name of the stage three, and then stage one is called experiencing a waning love and embracing affection. This is chastity. <laughs> the fuck. It's crazy, right? And then it deals a damage. Fallout Boy song title. It does actually sound like a Fallout Boy song title. Oh, fuck, you're right. Um, she deals damage to one enemy and then eighty percent chance to charm them for one turn because she has a five star in the gotcha. She just deals MP damage one thousand two hundred percent, and then she can increase her own uh, quick performance, which is the what her noble phantasm's art style is. So she deals an additional twenty percent to all her arts cards. And for one turn, I believe. No, for three turns. It's for three turns. So yeah, that is uh that is comma. Or comma? Comma? Either way, this is her. Uh what do you feel here? I didn't mention uh, any of her skills because I'm not sure if a hundred percent of it is uh translated yet. I am confused and scared by her art and she turns into the galaxy. Correct. I'm gonna give her a three out of five. I think that's respectable. Three out of five is uh, pretty good. Uh, again, really glad. I'm loving the new trend of... This is not technically a new trend because the other unit, uh, the first unit we mentioned was two years ago. And they have since broken this pattern of just like having little girls that are at least not in fully revealing clothing. <laughs> it's a nice change of pace. I can see that. And now we will go into our final unit, which I've saved basically the showstopper for the final. This is another welfare servant. Welfare means free for everyone out there in case I've been using it and have not been explaining myself at all. It is Quetzalcoatl Samba slash Santa. And this is uh, everyone's favorite uh, ho-oh looking bird made a woman who loves to lucha. Her skill one is called Sambista. It's rank B. It increases party attack for three turns, gains critical stars every turn for three turns, and it is attack 10% and five stars at level one and cooldown a seven. And then at uh, 10, it is 20%, uh, 10 stars, and then five turns. Her second skill is called uh, Goddess's Gift, rank A. Increases own party's critical star absorption for one turn. Increases the critical Stark generation rate by 30% for 3 turns. And then at level 1 it is 300%. And then at level 10 it is 600%. And it's cooldown 7 and it goes down to 5. And then her third skill is called Christmas Killing Method EX. <laughs> she increases her own buster performance for 3 turns. Increases critical star absorption rate for buster cards for 1 turn. And it is 20% at skill 1 and with 300% absorption and cooldown 7. And at 10, it is 30%, 600%, and 5. And also her class is Ruler, which means that she takes no damage from... She only takes damage from two servants in the entire game, making her effective at tanking and stuff. And uh, her Noble Phantasm is called uh, Yucatan Regalo de Navidad, which means delivering love to children on the holy night. <laughs> It, oh. She increases her own critical star generation rate by 100% for one turn, activates first, and then deals damage to all enemies. Uh, since she is a welfare, you'll get her to MP5, so it's 500% damage, and then the overcharge effect for crit damage is 30% at uh, 100, and at 300% it is 40%. And it keeps going up there by uh, 5%. Uh, she also has a... Okay. So I'm going to quickly explain the lore. So basically every Christmas time, 
there is a Santa unit that gets released. Uh, previous years, it was Quetzalcoatl's time, only she misheard someone saying Santa because she doesn't speak good Japanese. And so she heard Samba. So she's like, I can be Samba. So she dressed up in a Samba outfit for Santa Claus. And they said, this is wrong. And she's like, it's okay, I can be both. So she is called <laughs> Samba Santa. And let me quickly show you the art. This is her at stage one through three because she is a welfare servant. Uh, quick. Here's art one. That's her hey, first. That's just Ho-Oh. Yeah. That is just straight up Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh is based off of the actual Quetzalcoatl, so that's why she looks a lot like Ho-Oh. And this is stage four, which is just an increased view of t- uh, tilted downward. Yeah, that's just uh, that's just the exact same picture, but the Bob's and Vagine version. Exactly. And then here's something that's pretty good is that she has a um, she has uh, so in the, in the in the in the event itself, which this is going to take another bit of explanation. The Christmas event for her year is basically um the ultimate muscle arc called ultimate chojin but told through fate so it is an ultimate muscle uh basically reference for the entire event so it's all about luchadors (laughs) so she has a version of herself where she wears a mask so if you want to give her an actual luchador mask you can totally have her have a luchador mask that's pretty great yes and then here is her noble phantasm which I believe there's two versions, which is pretty... No, let me see. Let me make sure this is the right one. Let me... Uh... Oh, okay, so this one's not going to have it, is it? It's fine. I'll explain to you after we see it. There, there is a There is a second version of it that is harder to get. Not that it's harder to get, but it randomly shows up. Samba no step de this gift by the way in lore reasons this is based off of the fact that quetzalcoatl was blamed for the dis- disappearance of the dinosaurs oh so she is dropping on everyone a fucking um a giant fucking meteorite <laughs> <laughs> on uh, everyone it's a meteor yeah and uh the second version of this that you can get occasionally is that another character will show up in an announcer table and be like she will uh basically like talk as if it's a wrestling match and she goes like oh my god here comes in the gift oh the gift is coming down please not be that everyone and the present literally shows up and blows him up so it's the exact same uh- effect except for like an announcer like jim ross shows up and drops presents down. It's pretty funny. It is. Um, this is Samba Santa. It's Quetzalcoatl. So what are you feeling for this? Uh, again, this is a free unit. This is a unit you just get. <laughs> you just have this. No, uh, I'm going to go five out of five, I think. Mm. Five out of five is pretty respectable. I'm going to go uh, even further. I'm going to give this girl a ten out of five for <laughs> repping my culture so good. That's fair. Very rarely. There are currently um, two... Uh, I believe there's tech... No, there's... I'll say two. He does not count. Uh, there are two units that represent basically uh, South America. No, not South America. It's Mexico. Because Japan also thinks that South Amer- Mexico is South America, but it's not. Um, that represent Mexico, and both of those units are Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> so <laughs> there's two of her. That's funny. Yeah, the other unit I was going to talk about is uh, C- C- Columbus, but he doesn't count, because fuck Columbus. That's Columbus a, is a dick. Yeah, Columbus is a dick. That's a, that's putting it lightly. <laughs> that's a 1 out of 5 on the scale. That's actually a negative. That's a negative 10 on the scale for Columbus. Fuck you, Columbus. Yeah, fuck you, Columbus. So I think combined that would make her around a 7, 7 out of 10. There you go. Actually, no. Seven and a half out of ten. Tech, I forgot. Once it goes beyond ten, we actually add it. She has a fifteen out of five. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, it no longer adds together. So that's a fifteen out of five. That's respectable. All right then. That was the the unit breakdown right there. I hope uh, everyone understood that. And now we will go into questions. Are you ready, Zen? 
I'm ready. I lost the question thread again. God damn it. Oh. <laughs> oh. There's got to be a better way. Uh, let's see. No. No. That's not the question thread. That's not the question thread. That's also not the question thread. <laughs> How many times can I say that's not the question thread before it's It actually... was never a question thread. Okay, here's a good one. This actually kind of fits into the overall thing. First question comes in from Baby Maxer, uh, called at Baby Maxer Two. He says, "What wrestler would you want to see as a servant?" We talked about, of course, your era of wrestling. So, which one would you feel best to come to come in there? Um, was Stone Cold Steve Austin? Stone Cold Steve Austin would be pretty good. What 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 class could you see him as? Like maybe a berserker or saber? Definitely, class? he's got to be a berserker because he would just kick you and then drink beer a lot. So his noble phantasm would be the he would kick a bunch of mud holes into you and then end it with the stunner. And then he would drink beer over top of your body, spilling it on you while he drank it. Twenty second long noble phantasm of him drinking beer over the <laughs> corpse. I think that would be fit pretty well. I'd agree with that one. And then to have uh, another wrestler, uh, let's you know, let's do the rivalry. I'll say we'll put in The Rock, specifically the Rock era of The Rock. So we would not get uh, Rocky Maivia, which is the start of him. We would get post-Nation of Domination heel turn on him, where he turned super fucking evil. So that's when you actually started to get The Rock everyone liked, where he was like, The Rock says this. One... <laughs> I think one time there was one episode of Raw where he debuted as like, I bet you're all dying to hear uh, what The Rock thinks about the current situation in Iraq. <laughs> and then he says, you know, you never mind. And then he kind of doesn't actually speak his mind about it at all. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, there you go. That's the that's the Rock I would like. And that I would say that'd be Saber class. That's the only class that would fit for him, for me. Thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Primist. He asks, who's your favorite character to use? Zen, I know you love playing some fake Go. What's your dude? Who's your dude of choice? Uh, my dude of choice is this uh, Santa Ho-Oh girl. <laughs> Quetzalcoatl? You get a rapid... Yes. You know, I could respect that. Um, I Because I play global, I don't have um, Quetzalcoatl at all. My Everyone else on my friends list pulled her but me. So that was a good feeling. <laughs> I think me and Snake are the only people who did not pull Quetzalcoatl who actually wanted Quetzalcoatl. So it's a good feeling. Uh, if not her, then Arash, definitely. I like using him a bunch, even though he dies pretty quickly. Uh, next question comes in from Big Old Nerd, who says, How big a boy is Arash? See uh, the last 20 minutes to see how big a boy Arash is. Uh, next question comes in from that one Jake guy who asks, if you were going to start fresh on Fake Go, which unit would you keep an eye out for? Um, Hercules is uh, the good unit. Uh, Heracles, I guess is how he's technically called in the in the game, is a good unit to get on your starter ticket. And then from there, don't actually expect anything from the band, from the, from the gotcha. <laughs> From then on, just expect disappointment. Yeah, kind of from that point on, you're not going to get anything. A lot of people joke of like, oh man, you really don't get anything. I really don't see the fucking point in re-rolling in Fake Go at all. You just got to roll with what you got, bro, and that's it. Is it one of those games where the re-roll is so bad that the act of re-rolling will make you not want to play anymore? Uh, I think it's a combination of that, and then also the game is, the banner is what it is. So like... Why, kind of like, why bother? Like, it's 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 one of those things of, like, I think it's similar. You know how people feel about Gogeta on Legends? Yes. Imagine if that was every banner. Uh. That's fake go. And there's really no reason why, if you're pulling, do you feel, unless you're pulling, you're, unless you're going, like, 10 multis deep, at that point, like, maybe you have a chance of maybe getting one copy, but that's just not going to happen, bro. You just got to go to the actual, like, um, you have to go to the, something like the Fate Reddit and check out the fucking salt roll thread when a new banner comes out just to see, like, yeah, I spent 1,000 quarts and didn't get anything. Didn't even get a five star and you go, like, what the fuck is your life? Why would, why Ugh. would anyone try for this? And obviously, um, 
the, that's their money. That's they should have the right to spend whatever the fuck they want. But as someone like me walking in and going like, I'm kind of interested in this person and seeing people go like, oh, yeah, I went a thousand deep when the quartz cost is like thirty. So one multi is thirty. So the amount of pulls they did is insane, and they still did not get shit. That's too much. That is thirty three multis. Thirty three multis and not anything. So it's just like you have to be playing with like if you're trying to do like basically this the hall approach, you're always gonna lose. The house literally the hall approach. <laughs> yeah, which is keep summoning and then eventually something will happen. <laughs> that doesn't work on fate. <laughs> it does really does not work. People have saved uh people saved an entire year for Merlin, saving all the free to play stuff that they got, did not get them. Yikes. It's that kind of game. It's that kind of fucked up. And the only thing that's equally as bad is Dragalia, but that's because when you pull a dupe in Dragalia, it fucking sucks. Yeah, uh, that's like the least value dupe I've ever seen in any gacha game is Dragalia's. Yeah, specifically adventurers. Um in in Fate it sucks, but at least like you can say like they're slightly stronger now. They were already strong at uh at MP1, but now they're just crazy stronger. But yeah, it's a it's a fucking rough ass multi. Like if you're gonna reroll, you're gonna do the reroll for the tutorial summon, which in which case you should try and get Her- Heracles, and if not him, then you try and get Emia, and if not them, then it's fine. Just roll with who you got. There's plenty of good um, one to three star servants where it's not gonna be too much of a hassle, and there's always friends. But if you are gonna try rolling for a five star and it's not the banner five star, try and get Waver. Waver is the one of the best support units, and he's always in the banner. That's about it. And this last question is actually, um, this is more of a request, and it says, tell people not to hunt for five and four stars. Three to two are good as long as you level them, and that's true. Uh, I know Shakespeare and Hans, uh, the guy, Hans Christian Andersen, the guy who wrote Little Mermaid, are fantastic casters. Um, Spartacus is a big ass buff dude, but he's a perfectly good berserker for what you need him from. Arash, as we mentioned, is a very good boy, and he blows up everything very good. Uh, and in terms of three stars, there's Ku, who is a lancer who everyone loves because he is basically a cockroach. You can't kill him. And then there's everyone else. Yeah, there's a buttload of them out there, but you don't really need to like. Don't go chasing four or five stars. It's bad for your health. Uh, I, I hear nothing but horror stories about that. Yeah, don't do it. It's uh, I've only been able to play this long because I don't get super into it. And the people who do get super into it, they either get lucky or they get shit on. I once saw a friend. Um, there was one unit he wanted, and she shared the banner with another unit. And by the end of his pulling, he had uh, Noble Phantasm Five of the other unit on the banner, but did not get a single copy of the one he wanted. Yikes. Yep. So that's just to show you how bad it fucking gets. So that's uh, that's another episode of uh, uh, Fate Slash Two be released. You didn't really get to say that much then, but that's because this ep- you know at this point people should know that this series is really a lot of just me talking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the Wrestle we started with WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah, you know, to be fair, it's WrestleMania. It was a lot of it was And then we got into like weird uh bread lollies. Yeah, there was then the... gotten into Suicide Sam and uh Suicide Sam. Ho-O. Yeah, and Ho Oh Christmas Girl Sooner. S- Samba Santa. It's true. Uh you know the but that's everything. That's that's why we've been doing this many episodes of it this this far in. People should get used to it. All right, everyone. We'll see you on the next episode. And we still don't have an outro for this. <laughs> <laughs> it should just be Suicide Scr- Sam screaming Stella. That should just be the outro. Actually, there you go. Here's the here's the outro, everyone. <laughs>